Sometimes you want something a little bit wider when it comes to photos, especially getting that landscape stuff. Okay, so I forgot to charge my batteries last night uh, because they only take 45 minutes, so I get lazy sometimes. Um, there's a USB port here, and well, uh, luckily I have one of those portable chargers. So let's just hook that bad boy up. Look, I, I really like the 90 degree uh, ones as they don't cause too much interference. Sticking them in the bag here. Woo! You got Almost lost you guys. And this is only like five dollars. This is what uh this is about five thousand milliamps. This is a 2.1 charging. So let's see how much it charges. Yeah. And just to make sure that it is charging, you can see it's blinking. This was actually not that depleted, it was about here. Uh, in fact we can check. Yep. So let's check on it again when we fly and it should be fully charged. Good for 10 minutes, baby. 10 minutes. Let's look this up. And yeah, let's check on it in a little bit. Hey guys, Chris and Alan Tech here. We're uh, driving around with family. Today we're going to look at the different panoramic modes for the DJI Spark. Hello. So yeah, there's three different modes for the DJI Spark. When using the panoramic photography modes, the DJI Phantoms have a field of view of about 20 degrees or so. Mavic and the Spark, I think they use relatively, I think it's a 25, 25 or 28 degree uh, field of view. Sometimes you want something a little bit wider when it comes to photos, especially getting that landscape stuff. Let's just dive right into it. And, uh, I'm going to do film. So today we're going to look at a little bit of some photo options, just the, primarily the new panoramic modes that are available and how you use that. One key feature that I want to talk to you guys about is making sure your exposure is right. So let's automatically go to metering and adjust everything accordingly. And let's uh, change the white balance. It's good. It's pretty sunny right now. And we want to do this all before the flight because we don't want to mess around. Uh, histogram, I'm going to make sure that's on. And then finally, we want to select this guy right here, panel. So I'm going to click the panel button. And as you can see, there's three different modes here. This first one here will just shoot a vertical kind of picture. It'll look like this, pretty much three pictures layered on each other. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Alrighty, so we're flying. I'm looking for Mauna Kea, which is in the back right there. Alright, so my subject is in the back that I want to look at. Okay, so look at, let's look at our uh, thing. It's close to zero. Okay, so what I want to make sure is the exposure here is close to zero, which it is. And then let's take the first picture. Okay, so then let's take a look at the, the next mode, the pano mode here. Let's take the first one. And let's see, let's see what it does. What you're going to notice is that it says auto exposure lock. So whatever exposure you have it, it's just going to lock it there. So it did one. I'll do it again. Okay. So then we're going to go to the next mode. And now this one is the horizontal, so you can see it turn left to right with 21 photos. So this is 180 degrees. It'll do. It's kind of like a, a a more realistic panel, I believe. Or uh, it'll it, it kind of look like a. Okay. So for the final mode, we're gonna go this last one. It's supposed to produce something like a, almost like a sphere, spherical-like effect. Let's go take a look at that. And this is nine photos, basically. All right, and we're good to go. So let's just take this down now. As mentioned, I, I usually shoot these, uh, the panels outside, and then I process it inside. So it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Let's click the play button right over here. It doesn't stitch it automatically. You actually have to click the editor for it. So let's, let's do that really quick. Okay, we select that and um, what you'll notice is that depending on the mode that you shot uh, I'll tell you right here look this one right here is um, a video as you can see it looks like a monitor 
This one right here or is the last option that we shot. This is the middle option and this one is the vertical. Let's select the first one here and uh, so that's what it looks like and then if you select this bottom right button there that will be uh, it'll download it to your phone. I do recommend using the OTG cable for this because sometimes you lose uh, connection with the um, device itself when transferring. Okay. Now let's take a look at what the vertical mode looks like. Again, those are three photos put together. Until I put it side by side, then then we'll take a look at it. Let's download that. Uh, this option here is the 21 photos put together. Okay, so let's select that. Downloading. This is why I do it later. I don't want to do it in the air just because what if it runs out of battery? You know, I basically want to optimize as much as I want. So when I do fly, shoot photos, I don't review any of them. It does show like what you primarily took initially. It's better just to like look at it at the end. There we go. Okay, so now it's stitching photos together. All right, so as you can see, this is uh, this is what happens when you you just wait. Um, it's basically stitching all the photos together. This is more or less 180 degrees compared to the previous one. Again, I'll, I'll go side by side of them. It does take a while for this one to process. Again, it just depends on your phone. And then finally, this is uh, the last option here with just, uh, I think it was nine photos. And it does this for each panel that you took. So just keep in mind that there's no way of accessing these panels. This is interesting. I think it, yeah, it downloads it to your phone and then it stitches together. So maybe I was doing multiple things at one time. Okay, so this is the original uh, 12 megapixels, um, 4K resolution. You know, it's utilizing the whole sensor. This one right here is three photos put together. Um, you can see where it's cropping right here right so you get a little bit more air uh, this is the vertical mode let's do this again yep so you can see the blue house on the bottom right here okay so let's flip that over yep so right here was the cutoff and then probably right here okay and let's take reference this again again this is the next mode here. This is the this is the 21 photos. Um, you can see it actually cut off the. Uh, this is the blue house that we're looking at, and this is uh, basically seven across. And this way is three, so it more or less produces 180 degrees. you can see that it has this kind of curvature and then the final picture is just this one right here this is the this is nine by nine ah, interesting I, I didn't notice this right here there you can see that um, how it glued it together here um, it didn't work out that well on the left side obviously this is a nine by nine it's it's sort of a panel yeah, much wider you can see there's more landscape on this side, obviously, because it's 180 degrees. So if we go back, okay. if we go back here, it's just lopping it off. You can see a little bit of Mauna Loa here. Hey, hopefully you guys, hey guys, hopefully you guys learned something uh, through this tutorial. Again, using the DJI Spark for panoramic mode, you can come up with some really nice pictures. A couple tips that I do recommend is taking all the photos first you definitely don't want to spend time in the air processing the photos so again take all the photos that you want first when it comes to the panoramic modes and then once you land and then you know have a charged battery or whatnot to have the DJI spark stitch everything together uh, yeah for the most part it works really well definitely uh, another tip is fly during golden hour early in the morning or late in the afternoon that's usually when golden hour is Pick a subject that you want to shoot around. So in my case, I use uh, Mauna Kea as the center focal point. Finally is definitely use the OTG cable. Yeah, the on the go micro USB cable. Uh, it'll definitely help you when it comes to connecting your phone to your DJI Spark when transferring the data over and having it process. I've noticed when I use the Wi-Fi, it does crap out at times. So having that OTG cable helps up speed up the flow as, as far as um, 
data transfer. I'd love to see you guys' photos as far as the DJI Spark. Have you guys entered in any contests? Uh, I know that uh, DJI, the DJI app has a contest every so often. Leave it in the comment below. I'd like to see some of the work or whatever you guys captured with it. Again, I don't use it too much, but uh, I'm always inspired to see how people use, uh, utilize the app in different ways. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. As always, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys already haven't done so, subscribe to my channel. If you guys have already subscribed, thank you again for tuning in. Till next time, fly safe and mahalo plenty.